era. No, no, here you see ideology in its material force. We, can, we should distinguish here two levels. On the one hand are those ridiculous right-wing paranoias, which incidentally I like to listen, they amuse me, you know, like that Sarah Palin idea of uh, uh, death panels, some mysterious bureaucracy will decide does your ankle live or not. Uh, that's funny, I hope. At least for the time being, we can laugh at it. But then... Not in a big part of America, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then the real problem where the Republican uh, critique of health care plan really works is by appealing to this basic gut notion of freedom of choice. And I think this is a problem we have to confront it. The first thing we should make it clear is uh, that... Uh, in order to exercise the freedom of choice, one has to repeat this again and again, an extremely, to really exercise this, an extremely complex network of social, legal regulations, even, I would say, ethical rules which are somehow accepted and so on, has to be, have to be here. In other words, often, less choice, at least less public choice, at a certain level means more choice at a different level. Let me return precisely to healthcare. My idea is that healthcare should be at a certain level like water and electricity. You can also say that you usually don't choose your water supplier. No? Okay. Now we can play the Republican game and say, what a horrible terror. They are depriving us of the fundamental choice to choose the water supply. But we somehow accept that, that there are some things where it is much more practical that you are able to count on them. Sorry, but I, I gladly refuse the big freedom to choose my water Supplier. The same is for electricity, although there things can get more tricky. Why not add to this serious health? Europe demonstrates it can be done effectively not to diminish our freedom, but to leave you a much more space of much more greater actual freedom and so on. So you see, uh, we, this is the danger of this ideology of choice. Because, you know, this is in what sense a central category today? There is uh, an old Marxist card which is played again and again of we are only offered false choices, not the real choices like uh, Pepsi or Coke, whatever, instead of the real choices. Okay, there is a truth in it. But there is also another problem of ideology of choice that often we are bombarded by choices you really are free to choose without being given the uh, proper background to make a reasonable choice. John Gray, the British cynical skeptic, whom I otherwise admired, wrote very nicely that we are today more and more forced to act as if we are free. And this, this causes a lot of anxiety and so on. You know, one should be very specific apropos of choices. I'm all for the freedom of choice. I would just like to see the small, those, you know, in the footnote, the small print, what are the precise conditions of choice and so on and so on. So, again, although I have no illusions about what Obama can do and so on, I'm still proud that already before elections, I supported him, although this had no great impact here, of course, but in contrast to my very uh, more radical leftist friends whose motto was, he's just a nice human face on the same imperialism, he will even serve better the interest of capitalism or whatever. No, I think we see now, apropos the healthcare reform, that we are fighting the central battle here. I'd like to ask you in terms of the the so somewhat pessimistic view you have of what's uh, of how the response to the crisis has been there seems to be continues to be an entire continent that is heading in somewhat different direction uh, uh, South America and uh, Latin America and generally here comes that, my critical well I'd, 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 I'd love to hear it in terms because there does seem to be in many of these areas while the rest of the world mm. is the gap is increasing. Mm. At least there are governments throughout Latin America that are trying to decrease the gap uh, and to take a different are they role. they really doing it? You know, it's, uh, I am, uh, this is my skeptic. Some people already accuse me of being a covered neoconservative for what I will say now. Let's not have any illusions. I claim that much of the attraction of the 
recent wave, Hugo Chavez and so on, of Latin American populism, comes from this old desire of the left. Let's be clear. Many leftists in today in the United States are relatively well-paid academics who fight all the dirty uh, department career wars, but they like to feel warm in they, their hearts. So it's good to have, as far away as possible, another country where you can sympathize. You, oh, but things are really happening there, you know. At some point in the 30s, it was Soviet Union, Cuba, Chinese Cultural Revolution, Nicaragua. I'm afraid now that it is uh, uh, Venezuela a little bit. And I don't buy the standard liberal critique, Chavez dictator and so on. I just think Chavez started well. He did something of world historical importance, as far as I know. He was the first one of truly trying to mobilize people who were in favelas and so on, who were excluded from the public domain. He really tried to bring them into the political process. I claim if we don't find a way to do this, we are slowly approaching a kind of a new apartheid society where we will live in a kind of a permanent low-level civil war, where we will have some kind of irrational explosions like in France, the car burning in the Paris suburbs. On the other hand, I'm a little bit more pessimistic as to what in the long term he will really achieve. I think he is now losing his way approaching this standard Latino American populism where he, because of the oil wealth, is allowed to play the game of fiddle with oil, fiddle with money. I think, if you ask me, a much more interesting phenomenon is Bolivia. It's much more authentic. They are really being forced to invent something new. I always think that the genuinely utopian moments are not when you are doing okay and why not even better, are when you are in a deadlock then in order even to survive normally, you are forced to invent something. But I thought you would say entire, so no, I don't see too much hope in Latin America. But I see more hope at this moment with you in the United States than with Europe. Europe is now, I think, in great decline. I had some hopes about Europe. Why? Because to put it very simply, it still looks that we have two models now which are in competition, if I simplify the analysis very much. The Anglo-Saxon liberal market model and what we poetically call capitalism with Asian values, which means authoritarian capitalism. This is what every leftist, as I repeat it, should worry about. Because let's concede to the devil what belongs to the devil. Wasn't it that till recently, I'm sorry to tell you, again, as a strange communist, you will say, there was one good argument for capitalism. After, it may have been that capitalism needed dictatorship for 10, 20 years, Chile, uh, South Korea, but when things started to move, the, it, capitalism always engendered a push towards some kind of democracy. No longer. I claim that what is now emerging in the Far East, start, it started in Singapore, this kind of so-called, again, authoritarian capitalism, I think something new is emerging. A capitalism even more dynamic than one own, than our own, but which even in long term doesn't need democracy. Slavoj Žižek, uh, Slovenian philosopher, psychoanalyst, cultural theorist. Uh, his latest book is First as Tragedy, Then as Farce. And that does it for our show. If you'd like a copy, go to our website, democracynow.org. Democracy Now, produced by Mike Berkshire, for Doka Dusa, Armata, Angela Kalman, Steve Martinez, Nicole Salazar, Honey Masood, Rabbi Karen, Mike DeFilippo, Miguel Nagera, Peter Curry, our engineer. Special thanks also to Becca Staley, Nick Gaylock, Hugh Grand, Samantha Shumbly, Jessel Noor, John Gerberg, John Randolph, Laura Chipley, Travis Collins. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Our website is democracynow.org.